Hey you guys, I want to give you an update of why I'm here in Guyana, South America. I'm at my parents' place. This is their house. This is a little bit outside the gate. Some guys are clearing the side there. Um, it's a little bit of the compound. I wanted to just say hi and give you guys a bit of a walk around. This is uh, living outside of a condo COVID style to living in real, pure abundance. I can't tell you how abundant Guyana is. It is one of the highest biodiversity uh, rainforest on the planet with the most protected rainforest on the planet and species I think it's like every time a National Geographic scientist comes here it's like one out of every five species is unidentifiable <laughs> um, yeah there are coconut trees over here my dad and my children have climbed over here and gone up and got coconut all these gardens my mom has done herself. So why did I come here? Well, with the melatonin in my skin, I need to be uh, in a lot of sun and I had COVID. Another reason is a lot of my visions. I didn't want to talk about this while I was on Canadian servers. Um, a lot of the visions that I've had over 15 years ago are coming true. Um, I've told my family for years, no one ever believes me because of my visions, but <laughs> just give it time, they always seem to come true. Um, unfortunately, I've had to kind of learn with the gift of premonition and a very high psychic vision. Um, I was told, uh, let's sit by this banana tree. There's a mango tree. This is a banana tree. I'll show you guys a little bit more. This is all my mom's gardens. Uh, this little orchard here with mangoes. And here's another banana tree. Lots and lots of stuff here. Um, I've had visions of first world countries completely falling um, and a new world being born. And if you guys notice, hold on, let's just pause because I gotta jump up here. There we go. Um, yeah, I've had visions of first world countries completely dying and um, people having to leave the city centers in a really big way. I'm like sweating because it's like I'm near the equator. So, um, and everything that's happened with COVID um, and the way the vaccines are going, I am completely against these vaccines. I'm not against science. I'm actually very scientific. Um, <laughs> I'm very medical and have always been. I'm very much into natural medicines though my whole life. I make my own medicines for my children. Um, but I am about balance and I'm not about everything being about technology either. I used to work in IT for the federal government so I know a lot about technology and I'm not against technology either. I am about balance. We can't be too left wing, wing or right wing. And the reason I left was I noticed a lot of racial tension coming up in Canada. Now, I'm a brown woman, so <laughs> if you're anything other than BIPOC, which is white, and you don't realize that and this offends you, I'm sorry. But there is a truth to our reality that this world was created out of colonialism and I was suppressing every other race on the planet except if you're white. Let's just be honest, that's just the facts of it. And um, that doesn't mean that um, we have to be against white people or whatnot, but there's a lot of magical gifts and a lot of karmic energies that are coming in right now that are healing BIPOC and opening up to their gifts. There's also the rainbow prophecy that's happening where there are certain white people that are part of the rainbow prophecy that means that they have come into white bodies to heal that DNA lineage and to serve with people of color. Now, there's a lot of stuff happening politically, a lot of things happening politically. And as we've seen throughout history, many civilizations have fallen. Rome has fallen. England kind of held on to their monarchy a little bit, okay? And then we can get into the mystical wor worlds like Atlantis, Lumeria. Everything falls at a certain point. And this is why we as a collective consciousness continues to keep coming back to, you know, the earth to find this balance. 
right? So I left because I noticed racial tension. Um, they were putting OPP out. I was afraid if I was out and about um, that if something happened with my kids, their father's not involved, that I would have to, you know, um, I'd get in trouble. I, <laughs> I wouldn't know how to support them if I got in trouble or anything like that. So uh, being locked up in a condo, not around nature, literally killed me and then having COVID I need a lot of melatonin and I have a lot of melatonin in my skin and I need a high potency of sun more than someone who is fair skin than I am and I'm not even that dark okay so all of these theories of being locked up and this vaccine that hasn't been tested because I'll take the vaccine in five years give, give it five years I want to see who dies from it, <laughs> basically, because I ain't put nothing in my body without the proper scientific research behind it either. All right. Um, and we're, yeah, and Spirits is bringing through like we're at a very precipice time that we're going to see a lot of changes and um, we have to find that balance. And so if all of these things with being locked down, not being able to be outside, I need more sunlight than the average white person does a lot more. And uh, someone darker than me is going to need a lot more than I do. Um, I can't be in Toronto area. I can't. I couldn't give it to my children. I was so sick out of bed. I have nobody to help me. Nobody. Like, nobody. I have a sister who doesn't give a shit about us. So, you know, she would never... She doesn't have anything to do with our family or anything like that. Um, with my parents, she does. But she doesn't for my children. Never has. And so I've had to heal a lineage that's been deeply ingrained in narcissism completely. And the only thing that ever saved me from that was God and my connection to source and uh, my intuition. I did not grow up um, with the rational mind. I didn't. I grew up trusting my visions and trusting what God told me and how to move and what to do. And that makes it really difficult for a lot of people in my life because... I don't rationalize things. I have a very analytical mind. It doesn't mean that I'm in the woo 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 mind, or I wouldn't have been able to keep a career for over 17 years in the government at a very high level, purchase and own my homes, and be able to conform to society because I did, and very successfully for a single mother who never got child support. So <laughs> that takes a certain highly evolved soul to be able to do that balance, intellect, rationale, logical mind with this high intuition. So I've really come into an acceptance of my goddess energy, but there was somebody there. Um, yeah, and just owning a lot of my power and just not being afraid of it anymore because I'm really here to help lead the new world. And I have a lot of great insights where the mission is taking me in the rainforest here in Guyana and how to create not just a healing center, but a biodiversity research center for everybody that wants to learn about the next level of consciousness of plants and heal with plants, but also know that they are alive as well. And just like Terrence McKenna says that he believes that the plants deserve human rights as much as all other sentient beings on this planet. And I am for that. And I want to move along that and to educate people that plants are alive they have a consciousness and just because they don't have a brain they have a different way of connecting and than we do um not well not me i i've talked to them my whole life <laughs> it's like the fairies and the leprechauns and all of that came to me since i was a little child but um yeah there's definitely an understanding of the plants and the biosphere and the environment and the soil and everything else that we have here on the planet and I know that creating some type of educational format here um, I'll be able to do that my father also has a lot of connections here um, I have family in politics here so it just makes sense that spirit was helping me to come back and really heal a lot of uh, lineage on my side. I've also recently found out that there's psychic on both sides of my family. My dad just, I didn't even know we should be sharing this, but I've been healing a lot with my father. And my dad recently said that he, <laughs> he used to see ghosts and stuff when he was really little too. And I'm like, okay, this makes sense. And my son has this gift because he's recently been attacked by something very dark. So demons and all of these kinds of things are not new things to me. I'm not a new ager that just decided to go take a course you guys like this is something that I've been doing my entire life and I'm gonna be honest this hasn't been the easiest path um it's a very lonely path I don't have many friends I don't 
and I'm okay I'm a bit of a hermit and I prefer it that way because I would rather keep my consciousness pure and my vibration pure than to delve into all the other realms that you get siphoned I've been down that road too trust me <laughs> I get siphoned a lot and really hardcore um, the people don't even consciously know that they're doing it to me but um, which is fine I mean forgive me we move on right so my visions let's take a little like walk around again my visions around what's happening is that the first world is really going to kind of come down guys we're going to need new systems and new things in place and this is why this time i predicted that this summer that we were going to have a break um, we're going to have a little break where people are going to be given hope. Again, I called this out in my vision over a year ago. So this isn't new for me, but I know there are some naysayers that'll be like, well, you already know that because we're getting vaccinated. But no, I did say that over a year ago and that we're going to have a little break. And, um, after that break, what's going to happen is, um, it's like a little glimpse of hope. And if you guys have ever read The Shock Doctrine, um, you know what I'm talking about. But I would highly suggest reading that book. It's by Naomi. I can't remember, but it's an awesome book. I read it years ago, about 15 or 10, 15 years, maybe 10 years ago. Maybe lying 15 or maybe 10 years ago. Um, but she talks about how government politics and the forces behind government and politics right now that are running our world um, are highly influenced by these darker forces in regards to keeping um, you in shock. And by doing that is they create catastrophe, pull back, so that you would rely on them when they feel that your trust is becoming um, not dependent on a system. And there's more freedom happening with people and creating... Uh, new states of consciousness and healing centers and things like that, they will then create another catastrophe. 9-11 is a perfect example, right? Um, Ebola is another example. Now we have COVID. Um, what do we have next? We have uh, black fungus, I think it's called in India, is showing up. And now they have another thing in Canada called brain cluster disease. So, I mean, it's just never going to end, right? Are these created in a lab? Maybe. I most likely think so, but I think they take variants of Mother Nature and they mediolate it. And this is another reason why I don't agree with scientists also taking plant medicine like ayahuasca and studying it in a lab. We don't need to understand everything, okay? We can't understand God until we move into God's world. And if we're going to move into God's world, it doesn't make logical sense, okay? Everything in spirit is the complete opposite of how it manifests in here. This is the past. This is is the past all right and i also work with my shiva eye i'm so psychic my shiva eye in the back of my head is completely open it happened during an ayahuasca ceremony and um, i can see out of the back of my head which is futuristic and visionary and moving towards the future so um my visions are very highly based oh look at the dragonfly do you see it do you see it look how it's just yeah i mean <laughs> so freaking like paradise out here um yeah so these states of consciousness is that we can't analyze it to the scientific detail until we go quantum and unfortunately a lot of uh, cause effect and matter type of studying matter in the detailed science that we know about right which is physics basic physics you know you're working on certain playing fields xyz yeah and okay you can add other fields to it but then you're moving into quantum and when you move into quantum it's based on observer uh, consciousness and when you start doing that you can't measure that and that's what scientists don't like right so um yeah in order to do that you're going to have to either yeah you're going to have to move into the state of of, of god consciousness and we can't get that with the mind you get that with the heart the soul and the deep inner, deep inner knowing and your intuition so i moved to watch what was going to happen in canada i believe it's going to open up a little bit um, I might go back this summer. I don't know. I haven't quite decided yet. I haven't permanently moved here yet. Um, there is land that I'm looking at and there is uh, definitely looking at investing here. And um, I'm watching the state of Canada and I know within the next year, 
my vision is by this time next year, we're going to be in again in a more disarray with something else. Um, so we have a little bit of a break right now. All right, we're going to have a break to gather ourselves. We're going to have a break to plan. So if you are planning to figure out your life and what that entails, I would highly suggest learning more about sustainable living. I would highly suggest, if you can, come together with other people, learn about other countries, know the countries that are going to be on the move and rising up. Um, not sure about how well the US and the U and Canada are going to be doing, um, and the first world countries. There's a lot of um, alliances happening with South America and India and Mexico. <laughs> Um, so in 10 years from now with our children, I don't believe uh, the world is going to be at a completely different place of what we've known it to be. And there's going to be a huge divide between those that want to stay and remain with the old way of living and those that are looking to create something more sustainable. So I wanted to put that message out there for you guys, why I've come to South America, um, back to my family's home where we have been here for about 300 years, three generations, and to learn the way of the bush people is what they say, the natives here in the rainforest, and to make my alliances, because we have um, some political pull here, and um, how to create a research center to teach people an educational center of plants and consciousness and to move that into a higher level beyond what science is currently doing and that's my dream and that's what I'm doing and um, how to build new communities with their homes sustainable living and to run ceremonies as well ayahuasca and other things like iboga and even cannabis ceremonies and mushroom ceremonies and um, how to learn to work with the psychedelic plants on a whole new level and to bring that awareness into the city centers so I'm here kind of scoping it out. Um, also, I'm looking for a husband. <laughs> I've been telling my dad, I'm like, okay, you know, a lot of connections. So <laughs> um, it's not my, that's not my priority, but, um, but it's definitely um, something that I'm looking at long term that, you know, I have five years before my children are teenagers and I don't know, they may want to be in Canada. I don't know. Um, but I want investments in multiple places so that we can move. Um, that being said, with my channel, um, it is, I'm going to still be doing readings and doing things like that, but as time goes on, it is going to be more centered in bringing awareness to the plants and to the earth and to be working with Mama Ayahuasca and healing and how to use um, your psychic abilities. Now, I want to bring that up a little bit too because the only way that you know that you have a really clear channel is when you're humble to your gifts. And there's a, a lot of people that work with magic and energy and have no idea. Like, they think they know what they're doing, but they don't. And I'm telling you, this world is rampant with demons and we're going to fall into a much darker place before we can elevate. And the reason for that is because God would never leave anybody in the pits of hell right nobody we have to fall as a consciousness completely even further than what we're falling now and that's why i see by this time next year it's going to be a little bit um most definitely not improved i think we're going to get a little bit of an improvement and then we're going to be like what is this like i think it may even start before the summer like it might start spring of next year i think we're going to get a little bit of the last bit before things get bad and um yeah that's my honest truth of what I've been seeing so um that's why I'm here we'll see if I stay <laughs> um but even everything else with your psychic abilities and stuff part of my mission is also to help people learn what your visions are actually meaning because I can tap into other people's visions a lot of shamans can tap into your visions but they manipulate your visions I don't do that because uh, I ain't create, here to create more karma and I ain't here to be in alliance with the dark forces but the dark forces know me uh, I just cleared a Lilith demon from my parents home 
okay? Because there has been darkness that traps your family lineage from your psychic gifts. And my entire family is so psychic that on both sides, there have been dark energies that have been trying to siphon uh, my family. That's where a lot of other uh, low consciousness comes from. That's where hate and anger and all those things come from, where you think it's you, but most of our planet are being siphoned by the darker forces, okay? Um, and this is how we can have compassion for people who do evil doings because it's not how they were born. And everybody deserves redemption, a piece of land, and love, and to know God. So, I think that's it. I'll leave you with this beautiful paradise with someone playing some music over there. Oh, it stopped. <laughs> And I would love to hear your comments on that. I'm going to be creating a landing page of people that want to, you know, maybe be interested in my project and who want to be part of sustainable living. Um, I'm going to be starting to build community up around that. So if you are interested, email me and um, or comment here. Um, you just email me. It's the best way. And I'll be creating a landing page so that people can actually sign up for newsletters and stuff like that. All right, guys. So much love from Guyana, South America. Bye.